morning. It is great to have all of you joining me tonight on Zoom, on Facebook. We are all one uh, wonderful church family. And I, I will say it again, I will keep saying it. I absolutely love the fact that our church family has become virtual, that we have expanded well beyond the walls of the sanctuary and we have reached into um, the homes and the lives of people literally all around the country. And in, I was inspired by that. And I sent away for a jersey, a baseball jersey. And um, it's a little easier to see when it's uh, buttoned up. But um, let's see, I'm trying to get it here. Uh, I'm going to put it on in a second. Um, but it says... Uh, on the front, it says St. Paul's. Can you see that? But it's on the back, what I want to show you, because this is what's been the biggest inspiration for me. This is the back of it. Now, I want to be really clear about something. It is not number one, because I think that I'm number one. Um, oh, perish the thought. Nor is it number one, because I think that St. Paul's is number one. No, I got this this way with the number one because what has inspired me so much about what we have become, granted out of necessity because of the pandemic, but what we have become nonetheless is really nothing less than the answer to the prayer Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you remember what he prayed? He, when he knelt and prayed after he had prayed that the cup be taken from him, and then yielded to God's will, knowing that he was about to go to the cross. He prayed for all of us, and he prayed that they may all be one. And who knew that it was going to take a pandemic, and we still are a long way from truly being one as all of Jesus' followers. But I would say that we have made a tremendous step forward in all of this, and I could not be more inspired by all of you coming together and uh, doing this. So I wear this in honor of all of you. I also want to thank one of you. I don't know if she is on tonight or maybe will join us later, but I got the most beautiful card from Lori Schofield, who, uh, yes, you St. Paul's people are not going to know who she is because, you see, we have become one. And Lori is part of our virtual church family. Lori lives in Waterville, and it's a wonderful card. And inside, Lori makes masks. She sent me a mask. Wait, wait for it. Ta-da! So thank you, thank you, thank you, Lori. I absolutely love it. I will be wearing it with great pride, uh, despite the fact that they did pretty lousy in the first game this afternoon. All right. I hope we are going on um, Facebook here. I guess we are. Yep, I guess we are. All right. Moving forward. You can tell I don't quite yet trust this technology, right? I started on my phone, but I'm not entirely sure that, uh, that everything's working. Maybe eventually. I will actually trust everything, and probably by then we'll all be back to normal again, whatever that means. You know, I have shared with you um, in the past how much I like storybooks, kids' storybooks, and I have several of them here in my office. Not quite what I would call a collection, mind you, but I just absolutely love the vivid pictures. You know, there's something about children's storybooks that the illustrations help to really bring the story to life. I'm a visual person anyway, so I just love some of the storybooks. And so tonight, I had this one. Isn't that beautiful? Just look at those colors. Fly, Eagle, Fly, an African tale. Now, I picked this up specifically because I originally heard this story about an eagle that, believe it or not, was raised as a chicken. Yes, you heard that right. I originally heard the story from none other than Desmond Tutu. When I was in seminary back in New York City several years ago, we had the rare opportunity one night to hear Desmond Tutu speak at Riverside Church. 
We happen to be having our class in one of the upstairs rooms at Riverside Church, and one of my classmates got wind that Tutu was speaking and that it was free. And so you know what happened next, right? We all ganged up on the professor and convinced the professor that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity and we could always study whatever it is that the class was about and we needed to go hear Desmond Tutu speak. Well, fortunately, the professor uh, let us do that. And in the midst of everything else that he spoke about, which if you ever get a chance to hear the man speak, he is a phenomenal speaker. But in the midst of all of it, he told the story that this storybook is based on. And as I said, it's a story about uh, an eagle. But let me start from the beginning. As the story goes, there was a farmer. And he went out one day looking for a lost calf. The boys in the village had brought home all of the other cattle the day before, but the calf had been missing. And what really worried the farmer is that there had been a really bad storm the night before, and he was really concerned about what might have happened to the calf. And so he went out, set out early in the morning to go find this lost calf. And he searched high and he searched low. And while he didn't find the calf, what he did come across in the cleft of a rock up against the mountainside was a little baby eaglet. Clearly, the farmer recognized right away that the little eaglet had hatched just three or four days prior and had clearly been blown out of the nest by the storm. It was still alive, but without some care, it wasn't going to be for long. So with no way to return it to its nest and its original mother, the farmer, who also raised chickens, very carefully cupped it into his hands, carried it near to him so he wouldn't drop it, and carried it home to the village. Well, he was overjoyed when he got to the village and found that somehow the calf had made it back on its own. So that problem was solved. So the farmer took the little eaglet and he very gently set it down with all of the rest of the chickens and they quickly came over and adopted it as their own. And as time went by, the chickens raised the little eaglet as their own. It was a little funny looking to walk by and see all of these chickens and then an eagle in the midst of them, particularly as it grew up. And yet, everyone along the way somehow forgot that this was, in fact, an eagle because it had been raised with the chickens. And as you might imagine, it pecked the ground and ate like a chicken. It ate whatever had been thrown out for them. It walked like a chicken. I can't quite do that, although I know the chicken dance. And it acted in every way just like a chicken. And one day, a friend of the farmer's came to visit, and he saw this odd sight of this eagle out with the chickens. And the farmer's friend said, why do you have an eagle out with the rest of your chickens? The farmer said, what are you talking about? We don't have an eagle. We just have chickens. The friend said, no, see that one right there that looks different from all the other ones? That's an eagle. The farmer says, no, 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 that's not an eagle. Watch it. It eats like a chicken. It walks like a chicken. It acts like a chicken. Clearly, it's a chicken. Well, the farmer's friend tried a few different ways to convince his friend that this was, in fact, an eagle and not a chicken, but nothing worked. And so one morning, as a last-ditch effort, the friend woke the farmer up very early, before dawn, and he convinced him to go with him. The friend picked up the eagle, and the two men climbed to the top of a very high nearby mountain. And when they got to the top of the mountain, the friend took the eagle, and he set him down on the edge of the mountain, facing the east, where he knew that the sun was about to come up. And he set the eagle there and watched. And as the sun rose over the horizon and the eagle felt the rays and the warmth of the sun coming into his body, he spread his wings out nice and far. And as the sun continued to come up, the eagle leaned into the wind coming in. And the next thing that the farmer 
And the friend said, well, the friend spoke to the eagle. And he said, you are not a chicken. You are an eagle. You do not belong to the earth. You belong to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. And the eagle leaned into the wind. And the wind filled underneath his wings. And the eagle took off and soared into the horizon, never to peck from the ground again. Isn't that a wonderful story? And the moral of the story, as Tutu shared with us, is that we are the eagle. You see, we are not created for this world. We're in the world, but as the Bible tells us, we are not of the world. We are created by God in the image of God. We belong to the kingdom of God, not to this world. We live in this world, but we belong to heaven. We belong to God. Like the eagle, we have been created to fly, not peck around the ground like a bunch of chickens. I'm not calling anyone a chicken, by the way. But we're not, we're not meant for the earth. We are meant for heaven. We are meant to focus on God, not the things of this world. Yes, we need to be aware of what's happening in this world. We live within this world. But our primary focus needs to be on who we really are, who we have been created to be, and through Christ, who we can truly become. You see, I realize that through sin and through our own mistakes and pride, we have often been grounded and limited within this world. We sometimes forget that we have been created by God, that we are children of God, not children of the earth. That while we are flesh and bone, we are also spirit as God is. And we are created for eternity, not just for the temporal. We live here in the moment, but we are meant to live forever. And that's what Jesus secured for us. This is what we can remember in the midst of the difficult times that we go through in this world. When we keep our focus on God, on heaven and on eternity, we remind ourselves that no matter what we go through in this world, this world is temporary. We are not of this world. We are of heaven because we are of God. And this is exactly what Paul affirms in his letter to the church in Colossians. We call the book in the Bible Colossians in the New Testament. And we find his words that make reference to this in chapter 3 beginning in verse 1. And he speaks not simply to how we have been created, but rather, and almost more importantly, who we are now in Jesus. Because you see, it would be easy enough to say, well, sure, God created me for that, but I've messed up, and I can't do that anymore. Just like the little eaglet was relegated to live with the chickens, and believed itself to be a chicken. We can lose our mindset of who we are really meant to be. And this is why Jesus came, to teach us who we really are, and through his death and resurrection, to make a way for us to truly live into who we are meant to be. And this is what Paul talks about. Let me read you what, I'm talk what, what uh, he says. He says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in his glory. Your real life, your true life, is hidden with Christ in God. That's who we really are. We are the eagle. We are created and meant to fly. And when our sins grounded us and limited us, Jesus made a way for us to be risen, to rise above our sins to rise above 
the ways of this earth, to no longer be grounded and to simply peck at the ground. So we are more than what we may act like. We are meant to live in to our life as heavenly creatures, as creatures of God, of spirit. And not just someday in heaven. This is not just for then. This is for the now. When Jesus speaks of the kingdom of heaven, he speaks of it in the moment, even as he speaks of it as the eternal someday. So we can live with a focus on God now. And when we do, then the things of this earth will not affect us as much. They won't weigh us down quite as much because we will know that we are meant for more than what we are going through. We are created for greater than just this world. We are eagles. We are created to fly. So what we need to do in our own lives is to do for ourselves what that farmer's friend did. We need to be the eagle in that story. We need to look to the rising of the sun. And in this case, I'm speaking, of course, of Jesus' resurrection. We need to feel the power of new life that Christ makes possible for all of us that Paul was referring to. And then we need to lean into the Holy Spirit and let the power of the Holy Spirit pick us up and teach us to soar into the possibilities, into the future that we are truly created for and meant to enjoy. This is who we really are. And so let's stop pecking at the ground and worrying about the things of the earth. Live in this world, but remember that we are not, nor have we ever been of this world. We are created in the image of God. We are children of God and followers of Christ. We are eagles. And so I say to each and every one of you, you are not meant for the, the things of this earth. You are meant to fly. Fly, eagles, fly. Amen. Let us pray. God of possibilities and wonder, we thank you that we are created for more than what we may even realize in our hearts that we are. We thank you that you call us continually out of ourselves, out of our complacency, out of our imagined reality, and call us to what you created us for. And we thank you that when we doubt that we can achieve this because of the mistakes that we've made, because of the ways that we have gone astray and doubted in the past or in the present, we thank you, God, that through Jesus, we can live into the life that we are created for because we can soar on his wings and the Holy Spirit that you have sent to each and every one of us. And so as we prepare our wings, God, to soar as you have created us, as people of spirit, as well as people of flesh and blood in this world, but not of this world, we focus on heaven. And we pray to you for those who are in need of your touch this day, trusting that just as you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus, that you love each and every one of your children in this world. And you will touch them at the point of their need. You will be with them. You will wrap them in, their, in your love. And you will help to see them through whatever difficulty they face. And so, God, we lift up to you the people of Beirut in the difficult tragedy that they are dealing with, whether they have lost a loved one or are injured, whether they are left searching for family members that are, cannot be found. We pray in the wake of this terrible explosion, God, we pray that you would be with our, our uh, brothers and sisters there in Beirut. We pray, God, for all who are infected and affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. No matter where they are, God, it has touched so many throughout our world. 
We pray for each and every one of them. We think especially, God, of family members who uh, have lost loved ones, family members like Wanda and Rose, and we lift them up to you, even as they wonder about themselves and their own safety in the midst of this pandemic, and yet are now find themselves grieving uh, a terrible loss in their own lives. We pray for those who are awaiting because they have discovered that they have been exposed waiting to find out if they might demonstrate symptoms, not sure of whether or not they can go out of the house, not wanting to infect others, but not even knowing whether or not they are infected themselves. We pray, God, for those who have been tested and are awaiting the results of those tests. It takes so long and even a minute longer than what our hearts are ready for, God, is so difficult. And so we pray for all of us as we journey through this difficult time. Remind us that even as you reminded David, that even as we walk through the darkest valleys of our lives, you are right there with us. Not calling us on from ahead, not urging us forward from behind, but walking right alongside of us and when necessary, carrying us through. We thank you for this reality not just a promise, but this truth that we can live into this day and all days. And we pray all of our needs and joys and praise to you, O God, in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus, who makes all things new and possible. Amen. As we close out this night, I hope that all is going well with all of you. And as we wind down the summer, and I know that there are a lot of unknowns out there, I want to um, make an announcement again that I first announced on Sunday. And that is that with the fall and really uh, the end of this month usually comes the start of a new school year. And I know that there are more unknowns than ever about the start of a new school year. And so I want to offer something special this year something that we have been doing here at St. Paul's for several years, but now I want to extend it to our greater Bellevue community and also our entire uh, church family. Because just as we can meet virtually like this, we can do what I'm about to talk about virtually as well. And I want to offer that invitation. So what is it, you ask? It is a bl blessing of the backpacks. I will be doing it here on August 30th in a drive-through fashion. Anyone who wants to, if you are within driving distance, you can drive through. We have a little carport overhang. I won't touch anything, although I will hand you a little tag, a blessing tag that you can put on your backpack. And I will bless the backpacks and you can head on your way with your tag, reminding you that whether you go to school at home or at in person at school, God is with you throughout it all. And this is this blessing is not only for students, it is also for our teachers and anyone who works in a school setting. And as I said, it is not just true for those who live within driving distance, but for all who would like to participate. If you would like and you don't live within driving distance, just Shoot me a text or an email, contact the church, get a hold of me in any way, including leaving, if you're on Facebook, leaving a comment on the Facebook uh, comment section right now. I will contact you. We will set up a Zoom blessing time that I will sit on Zoom and I will give out the information. Anybody who wants can hold up their backpack. I will bless your backpack and then I will get your tag in the mail to you. Sound good? Because this is truly a time that we all need to take care of ourselves. We need to remind ourselves of God's blessing and God's love. Because that is what will get us through together as we come together and lean on God. And so, until I gather with you again on Sunday mornings at 1030, take care of yourselves, be safe, be kind to one another, and God bless us all. Amen.